Now you look at this one and you say, well, now wait a minute, chem guy, I, I got a feeling something ain't going to work out right here. Well, it's not a bad feeling. When you count up the number of valence electrons for PCL5, which is a totally legitimate molecule in nature, 5 times group 7, that's 35. Phosphorus is in group 5, so that's 40 in total. So now, it looks like P's in the middle, but then 5 chlorines around it? What, 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 wait a minute, if I put five things around something, and by the way, then I put lone pairs around here, oops, <laughs> and if you do this by putting octets right away around the chlorines, that's eight times five is 40. So there it is right there. You look at that and you say, um, oh, whoa, oh, oh. um, the deal is here that I've got phosphorus in the middle going 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, and that ain't right. That's not an octet. Okay, so now here's an exception. Some elements can exceed the octet rule. As a matter of fact, most of the nonmetals can exceed the octet rule. The ones that can't are located, well, hydrogen can't because it can only make a duet. But in group or period, period number two of the periodic table, like like uh, nitrogen and oxygen and fluorine and carbon. Now, why is that? Well, really, it makes complete, perfectly good sense. You know, two, four, six, eight. What is that really actually standing for? Remember that at n equals two, you can have. 2s and 2p orbitals totaling two electrons here and six total here. What's the total in, uh, involved? At n equals 2, you can have eight total electrons. And if that's your valence level, that's the number of valence electrons you can have. And that's the only amount of orbitals that you have, 2s and 2p orbitals to put electrons in. Hey, guess what? Phosphorus is underneath nitrogen at n equals 3. And at n equals 3, not only do you have s and p orbitals, but you can also have d orbitals as valence orbitals, as extra places to put electrons. So you're not limited by 8, you can go up past it. And so guess what? So we do. And so any, anything that's at n equals 2, less, greater than n equals 2, n equals 3, 4, 5, or just say, that on the periodic table, any of the elements below period number two, which are down here as, as, as far as nonmetals go, because this is n equals two here, any of these guys here can exceed the octet rule. And when they have to, they do. And so this is totally fine for phosphorus having 10 around here because it's exceeded the octet rule and it's comfortable doing it. Now, uh, that's PCL5. So, how about this one right here? This is a good one to actually look at. Ni3 negative is also an exception uh, in terms of the way we make a Lewis diagram out of it. So you look at that and you go, well, hey, hang on, that's, that's group 7 times 3 is 21, but that extra electron makes 22. So this is going to be an ion, so we're going to put brackets around it in the end, remember? So I3, well, my I attached to an I attached to an I. Yep, nice job, that's good. 2, 4. 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. And we just put two dots there, that's 20. And everybody's got an octet and is happy, but we need to put in 22. And when you have to put in extra lone pairs, which is what we actually have to do here, you put in extra lone pairs, put it at the central atom, because it's the one that will actually take it. So now watch this. 20, 22. This whole thing here is a negative one charge. Now, can iodine exceed the octet rule? Yes, because it's not in n equals 2, or period 2 of the periodic table. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10. The other ones are octets and are happy. So we put the center one as the only one that has to exceed the octet rule. Instead of two of them, we only have one exceeding the octet, octet rule. We don't put in multiple bonding, just extra lone pairs. And now, that's beautiful. Hey. So, I3 negative exists, right? And if we did this Lewis diagram for the other halogen 3s, we could go like Br33 negative, and then we'd just put Brs here, right? <laughs> and that's what you could actually make 
Uh, if you put Cl3 negative, you just put the Cls here. And if you put F3 negative here, you couldn't make it. Why? Because if there's an F in the middle, and it would have 10 valence electrons around it, fluorine is in N equals 2, and that means it can't exceed the octet rule. So there is no molecule NF3 negative, but there is for all the other halogens. Isn't that kind of cool? I think so.